Britain lots of really interesting, attractive people who apparently don't have jobs and don't pay taxes. But what are they protesting about? Because some of Stephen Harper's people seem to be right on and very green these days. Tom Harris, International Climate Science Coalition, joins us from Ottawa. Tom, what... Um, Kitchener Waterloo MP, and I know the other guy in, in Kitchener, he's a very good fellow, but this is Peter Braid. On the CBC, uh, with Power on Politics with Evan Solomon, quite a good fellow, Evan, he said, we are seeing the effects, the MP, we are seeing the effects, the impacts of climate change. What he really means is global warming, that's the phrase. Yeah. Um, with climate change comes ex extreme weather events. We saw that through the floods in southern Alberta. We're now seeing that with the ice storms in Kitchener, Waterloo and Toronto, with extreme cold across the country. Um, what's the scientific evidence for that? Well, there is virtually none. And in fact, two factors are going on here. First of all, there's been essentially no climate change for 17 years, no global warming or cooling. So you can hardly say that something that's not happening is driving recent extreme weather events. But, you know, we have to remember that extreme weather is, in fact, a characteristic of any planet with an atmosphere. And if you look over history, we find that much of the extreme weather, for example, in England, was far more severe than in the 1700s than it is today. You know, we've seen extreme weather events all the time, and we have to look at history, and that's in fact what this book does here. This came out, there's a thousand page document, the opposite of the IPCC, it's the NIPCC. Uh, this document actually has an interesting conclusion. Document, it's, 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 it's a huge, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the movie. I think it'll be <laughs> longer than Lord of the Rings. That's right, it has, as, you know, it has as many references as most books have to just fill a whole book with references. But it says point blank, and it presents many, many research papers from peer review science studies to support this. It says there has been no significant changes in the magnitude or intensity of extreme weather events in the modern record. Whether it's heat waves, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, floods, you name it, ice storms, many of those records, virtually all of them, were set long ago and sometimes centuries ago. So Mr. Braid is simply wrong. We get the impression that with the PMO's very tepid response, you know, they said, oh, well, no individual event can be linked to global warming. But, you know, they didn't chastise him. It kind of reminds me of 2010 when Maxine Bernier actually said some very sensible things about climate change. And he was lambasted, of course, by media and by the activists. So, of course, they never said it again. But the bottom line is we think this may very well be a trial balloon going up to the next election. You know, if in fact nobody on our side of the debate criticizes them and says, well look, it's ridiculous, the IPCC from the UN and the NIPCC, they both say there's no, no reasonable evidence to support what Mr. Braid said. Yeah. So I mean, if you have both sides saying it, why is Harper, you know, why is his people saying it and not criticizing him if he says things that are wrong? Well, we, we asked him to come on, uh, on, on this show and he said, he he's people. His people spoke to my people, I don't really have people, and declined, so he was running yeah. scared. Look, well, it, may, it, hold on, hold on. it may be a trial balloon. On the other hand, he's a fairly junior MP, and he may have just been... He's, this is not a, a particularly deep thing, with all due respect. MPs say things, they're interviewed a great deal, he may have wished he hadn't said it. Does it really yeah. mean very much? Well, the trouble is he's not only an MP, he's also the Secretary for Infrastructure and Communities. Wow. Okay, now, now one of the really interesting things, if had Toronto and, say, the Ontario government been spending time preparing for ice storms, burying cables underground, that sort of thing, many people who spent Christmas cold and hungry and freezing in the dark, those people would not have experienced that. You know, Washington, D uh, let's see, New York City and Manhattan, for example, they lost no electricity, no, ca no internet, uh, no telephone during Hurricane Sandy, and that's because they have their cables buried underground. So when the secretary, the parliamentary secretary for infrastructure, tries to blame extreme weather on you know human-induced climate change, that's a problem because what they're doing across the world is they're spending most of the money trying to stop these events from happening instead of preparing for them. That's a big, big mistake, and so it's it's a concern when somebody in his position makes these mistakes. I, it, it probably wouldn't occur to most people who, who are born in uh, in Canada. But when you come from another country, one of the things you notice first is wires over your head. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's almost unheard of in, in Northern Europe. And these are cities with greater populations and often bigger cities. And as you say, if this had been the case in Toronto, uh, the ice storm would have been unpleasant on many levels. But we wouldn't have lost power. Well, that's right, because most of the power was lost because of cables coming down yeah. with trees falling on them. That can't happen if you're several feet underground. So, I mean, that's where the focus should be from an infrastructure specialist in Parliament. It should be focusing on strengthening the infrastructure so you're ready for natural events like the Toronto ice storm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure what will happen after this. I, I have no idea where the Harper government uh, is going to, to go and actually proceed on this. But I don't know. It, it, it's one MP, and I often wonder how these guys don't make more mistakes or, or, or speak out of turn because they are questioned so often. But to go on the CBC and to say these things, knowing that you're going to have a captive and very flattering audience when, when you come out with that sort of comment, it is worrying. And, and I, I don't know much about this man. I wish he would come on this station and answer a few polite questions, but apparently he preferred to go on the CBC. Yeah, apparently. Mm. Well, uh, I, uh, by the way, let's have a look at that book once more. Just okay, to sure. To this, thing. this is okay. the Non-Governmental International right. Panel on Climate Change. It, you can see it actually online. There's a whole thing, a thousand pages. I bet that'd be great fun. What I was going to say, though, was it, it's quite handy because if you go to protests like the one we saw at the beginning where these stupid people... Oh, well, you could hit them with it. Exactly. <laughs> you could hit them with the book, which is always a great way to use fine literature. That's thank right. you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank you.